The Woman King is, without doubt, one of the most spectacular Hollywood own goals that I have ever seen. The Woman King has been for the studios and leading personalities involved in it nothing short of a public relations calamity. When Sony was planning the marketing campaign for The Woman King, they obviously had a very clear vision of how things would go. The mainstream media could be relied on for excellent reviews. They would never dare stand against what would be presented as a proud, empowering, black power, slay queen feminist movie. Woke Twitter would come on board willingly for a movie that ticks more boxes than an IRS employee on cocaine. That was all a given. The establishment would shill. When the trailer dropped, the black American market would rally behind the movie and Sony would use them as a human shield to easily deflect all criticism as hateful racism and racist hate bursting out of enraged white racists. Finally, with the black American public firmly in their pocket, free marketing pouring out of the social media culture war and the mainstream press on board as an eager attack dog, the movie would be released and the final weapon in Sony's marketing arsenal would be deployed. The R-bomb. Any white person who disliked this movie, and indeed any white person who didn't go to see it, would be openly accused of being racist. Fearing the label and eager to demonstrate their allyship, white America would line up to buy tickets for this movie, the box office would be conquered, and the sequel would go into production. Titled The Man Queen, the true story of an all-gay regiment of African warriors who defeated the American Confederacy at Gettysburg just as General Lee was about to crush the entire Northern Army. Get it now, get it, girl, get it, the tribe then went on to win the American Civil War and abolished slavery in North America despite the objections of Abraham Lincoln. Sony's marketing campaign for The Woman King was almost perfect, but there was just one fatal flaw in their devious plot. Human shield my ass. Black America did not line up behind the movie like the clueless little black pawns Sony clearly believed them to be. As it turns out, black Americans can read and can even carry out a basic Google search. Many of them were appalled by the movie's distortion of history. After the trailer for The Woman King dropped, it was quickly ratioed, currently sitting at 65,000 likes to 585,000 dislikes. The top comments all excoriating the movie for historical revisionism. And when I say historical revisionism, I don't mean Mel Gibson winning the American Revolution in battles that never happened. I mean Frederick Douglass was secretly a Confederate spy who captured free black men and trafficked them into the South. Levels of revisionism. I hate the Yankee nation and everything they do. The trailer declared that the woman king is based on powerful true events. The Dahomey were glorified as defenders of Africa, fighting the European slavers and seeking an end to slavery. In reality, the Dahomey kingdom was dependent on slavery as its main source of wealth and captured countless people, who were then sold into the Atlantic and Arab slave trades. They also took slaves for themselves and murdered any people among the villages they sacked who would not fetch a decent price when sold, such as the old and the infirm. These inconvenient historical facts were pointed out by black people on Twitter who were enraged at the assault on their history being carried out by Sony and the feminist Karens who created the Woman King. Far from being the useful idiots that Sony expected them to be, many black people, and not just in America but elsewhere also, called bullshit on the narrative being pushed by this movie. And Boycott Woman King started trending on Twitter, and almost everyone posting it was black. This was basically the end of any chance this movie had of making money. While it is true that some people did go see The Woman King on opening weekend as a result of the controversy and the publicity it generated, Sony's battle plan had basically gone completely to shit at first contact with the enemy. Sony needed black American consumers to uniformly endorse and support the movie, and in doing so, white guilt trip white Americans into paying to see a movie created by people that, quite obviously, despise them. When it was clear that there was little, if any, support for The Woman King coming from Black America, quite the opposite, the movie was dead in the water. The only question after that was how much money it would lose. Sony obviously thought that they could get away with claiming the movie is historical by using the nebulous phrase, based on true events. But The Woman King just isn't. If a studio wants to make a historical movie which takes liberties for cinematic and narrative purposes, but is fundamentally telling something resembling a true story, that's fair enough, 
It is a movie after all. But when a studio knowingly and insidiously inverts the truth of historical events, then flat out lies about the main historical figures involved and adds utterly fictional characters into the mix because they wanted a female lead and fictionalizes the martial skill of the group of warriors the movie is centered around and omits the human sacrifice carried out by the people they are glorifying and the facts about the abolition of slavery by the British and French efforts to... When they just make shit up and claim it really happened, they lose any right to claim that their story is based on historical events. For example, I do solemnly swear that to the best of my ability, I will support and defend the government of the Irish Republic. Evacuate the city. Engage all defenses. And get this man a shield. Fun isn't something one considers when balancing the universe. But this <laughs> does put a smile on my face. Now, I can assert that, yeah, well, it's not 100% accurate, but it is a movie after all. But the Irish really do exist, and, and Ireland is a real place, and they really did fight a war of independence, and the clothes are period accurate. So while Thanos never actually tried to conquer Ireland, we feel that we had license to assert that the movie is based on true events. But that is exactly what the Woman King is doing. When they greenlit The Woman King, Sony set out to deceive audiences on a massive scale. It was their intention from the start to lie to black Americans, Africans, British and French people about their own history. Their goal being to push their own extreme political ideology that places race at the center of everything and which insists upon a moronic black and white version of history in which Europeans were always bad and the people they went to war with were always good. They also decided to throw a heavy dose of Slay Queen feminism into the mix. The fact that this group of Amazons was utterly crushed in minutes by a French bayonet charge was quietly ignored and a more empowering account of their martial prowess made it to the big screen. We are all familiar by now with the marketing strategy known as fan baiting. The most recent and I think definitive example of fan baiting is Rings of Power. This show has become a well-deserved historical disaster of truly titanic scale. Rings of Power's magnificent failure will almost certainly make studios more hesitant to launch fan baiting marketing campaigns in the future. While it wasn't the main cause of the show's failure, it was the main marketing strategy Amazon went with and a failure as colossal as Rings of Power will have industry-altering consequences, and new, less toxic marketing strategies will be one of them. But Rings of Power had not yet been released at the time of Sony's decision to go with a negative marketing campaign, which would take the fan bait strategy, put it on mega steroids, and unleash it against the entire white population of the United States. But how did this abomination come into being? Why would anyone greenlight this divisive, ugly piece of distortionist propaganda pushed by Karen Wokax? And that's not just an offhand slur. The women that made this movie are deeply dedicated wokists. Here's a quote from the director. The thing is, for women and people of color, Often the resumes are not long because it's about lack of opportunity, not lack of talent. So when you're in my position, it's important to look past that resume. Let me read that last part again, just so you know you're not hearing things. It's important to look past that resume. So, Mr. Dahmer, it says here that you are an experienced serial killer and you have murdered 17 people. You can understand that we may have some reservations about hiring you. I'm gay. You're hired. Perhaps this policy of looking past the resume, you know, because black people are apparently incapable of personal achievement, explains the abysmal job done by this movie's marketing department. So why would any sane person greenlight what was obviously, from its conception, a woke 
fantasy project that was clearly a political statement rather than a viable consumer product. To answer that, we need to go back to the summer of 2020. 2020 will forever be remembered as the year the world went mad. Many nations decided the best way to deal with an explosive global pandemic was to imitate the actions of the Chinese totalitarian state and imprison their entire population within their own homes. In the USA, the death of George Floyd provoked mass protests, looting and rioting, or mostly peaceful protests, depending on your relationship with reality. In my own small corner of 2020, I became a new father and got so addicted to online chess that I had to go cold turkey to stop. What the fuck are these? Ideal for your purposes. Slow release. Bring it in gradually. I want a fucking hit. And I watched from afar as the United States went through, in the wake of George Floyd's death, what I think is most aptly described as a period of national insanity. Utterly absurd political ideas briefly became mainstream. Defund the police. The mainstream media engaged in a level of gaslighting that was disgraceful even by their standards. What you're seeing behind me is one of multiple locations that have been burning in Kenosha, Wisconsin over the course of the night. Large crowds of white people started kneeling to random black people who were unfortunate enough to cross their path. We're not rioting, guys. We're not shaming anybody, guys. We're just... Standing for the national anthem became controversial, and shit like this What's was up, all over people? social media. And the rest of you motherfuckers, I'm starting a trend. Look what I got. One, two. Oh, show them the bag. You gotta see the bag. Hashtag apology lunch. Go find yourself a black person and buy them some fucking food. Hashtag apology lunch every corporation was posting black squares on their twitter accounts they didn't know what the fuck it meant just that if they didn't post them it probably meant they were racist basically every sports ball player in america was now taking a knee this practice actually migrated to the english premier league for some fucking as yet unexplained reason for me the climax of the absurd race activist sports ball player phase was when a black football player tortured a cat for fun and a video of it ended up online. His teammate said the following in defense of the cat torture. So, do you think what he's done is worse than racism? Is, is what he's done worse than what the people have done that are convicted from racism? Damn it. What? He's using the racism for defense. Do you think what he's done is worse than racism? Is, is what he's done worse than what the people have done that are convicted from racism? How find you the jury? We find the defendant, Jerome Chef McElroy, guilty as charged. <gasps> Whoops. Whoops. In Seattle, several city blocks were taken over by the mob who declared it a sovereign state named Chaz, later to be named Chop. So Chaz quickly became the murder and rape capital of the world. This was described by the local mayor as the summer of love. Chaz had the potential to become the national capital for revolution. Unfortunately, the young nation had the disadvantage of sharing its border with the wealthiest and freest nation in the world, the United States of America. East Germany, the GDR, had a similar problem. It shared a border with the much more prosperous and free West Germany and had to erect an infamous barrier to keep their population from fleeing to the decadent West. But unfortunately for Chaz, they didn't have the resources to erect a manned border wall in time to keep their population from fleeing to the United States, though a primitive attempt was made. And the revolutionary furnace that was Chaz burned out. The nation was lost, but the dream lives on. I hate the Yankee nation. In short, 2020 was a year in which a lot of people made a lot of bad decisions. One of those bad decisions was related to a script that had been floating around Hollywood since 2017 entitled The Woman King. But Hollywood studios had no interest in making a historical fantasy movie about a band of Amazon warriors taking place entirely in Africa and with an all-African cast of characters. Such a project didn't exactly scream box office gold, and it was a near certainty that the script would be relegated to the dustbins of rejected content. But history had other plans. In that crazy year, the most important thing anyone in Hollywood could do was demonstrate their anti-racist credentials. Whatever the cost, no matter what the long-term effects were, you had to show that you were an ally. Because if you weren't an anti-racist, you were a racist. 
And so the Woman King was rushed through the greenlighting process by Hollywood executives eager to brag to their liberal wine friends about the role they were playing in bringing this powerful, anti-European, anti-Western, black power, war fantasy based on powerful true events, ultra-feminist and racially empowering story to the big screen. It would have been glaringly obvious to anyone capable of analysing the script for box office potential that this one didn't have any. In fact, the script had the stink of a flop all over it. The first major red flag was that it was set in Africa, and in the past 20 years, there have been only two seriously successful movies set in Africa, The Last King of Scotland and District 9. But The Last King of Scotland was made for a small fraction of what The Woman King would cost, and as for District 9... Perhaps if the Woman King script had been amended... An evil is coming. It might have actually pulled in a decent box office. Fuck man, I'd pay to go see Aliens vs. Africans. And in both the aforementioned successes, the main character and protagonist was a white man. And in The Woman King, the whites... Well... The Europeans wish to conquer us. They will not stop until the whole of Africa is theirs. They would not be depicted favourably. And this would not be the first major production set in Africa. Studios had tried it before and failed. Black Hawk Down was a 2001 movie set in Somalia. It failed to double its budget at the box office and finished a mild flop. Blood Diamond, starring Leonardo DiCaprio, came out in 2006 and was also a flop. Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom, starring Idris Elba, came out in 2013 and was a miserable failure, both commercially and critically. Even good movies set in Africa, notably Hotel Rwanda, had been a flop. But this movie was different. An action war movie helmed by a powerful woman. Audiences would no longer be turned off by toxic male whiteness. Or a toxic black male maleness. Surely, a movie set in Africa starring a woman would have a better chance at the box office. If only there was some way to know how audiences would respond to such a movie. Luckily for the Sony execs, that very year The Woman King was greenlit, an action war movie set in Africa and starring a strong female lead was released. It was called Rogue and starred Megan Fox. Surely this movie, led by a strong woman, would reverse the trend of American audience indifference to movies set in Africa. Times were changing after all. Black Lives Mattered now, and the Me Too movement had... Oh. 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 So... How did the studio execs respond to this major indicator that an action war movie set in Africa and led by an American actress playing a warrior wasn't what audiences wanted? They decided that it was what audiences wanted and sent The Woman King into pre-production. The next major red flag was less obvious but easy enough to see if anyone had bothered to look. But I guess those Hollywood execs were too busy posting videos like this. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility. I take responsibility for every unchecked moment, for every time it was easier to ignore than to call it out for what it was. And this? An evil is coming. Imagine there's no heaven. It's easy if you try. Apologies for the ear rip. Here is a brief clip of the Beatles as compensation. I've got a feeling, a feeling deep inside, oh yeah. The problem was that although The Woman King is a period movie and period movies are very popular, it's the wrong kind of period movie. The movie is centered around a very low technology tribe. Audiences like period movies because they like the splendor of costumes, the magnificence of old cities in their prime, the spectacle of long extinct sports, the practices of dead religions, the warfare of ancient generals, the strange and foreign ways of faraway civilizations, the dangerous sea-bound adventures of pirate villains in an age when a single storm could destroy a large ship, the nostalgia of times they remember from their childhood. But they're not interested in people who have very little in the way of civilization. No big buildings to look at, no large organized army formations, no religious rituals based on generations of literary and metaphysical contemplation, no pretty dresses, no crazy hairstyles, no period music, no cool weapons, no interesting foreign philosophy, just basic kind of Stone Age technology. It doesn't exactly make for a cinematically compelling spectacle. I mean, this is the throne of Xerxes. And this is the throne of the slave king. I know which movie I'd rather watch. 
You know what's crazy about comparing these two movies is that 300 is actually much more historically accurate than The Woman King. So no offense to the halfling savages that live on North Sentinel Island, but if Hollywood makes a movie about them, I'm not going to watch it. By the way, the king of the Dahomey, the Slave King, yes, that's what he called himself, had 800 slaves ritually murdered at his funeral as a sacrifice to his memory. We are the spear of victory! And every year during a religious ceremony known as the Annual Customs, around 500 slaves would be sacrificed as a tribute to the deceased kings of the Dahomey Kingdom. Freedom. Quoting from Wikipedia now, During the ceremony, around 500 prisoners would be sacrificed. As many as 4,000 were reportedly killed in one of these ceremonies in 1727. We are the home yeah. Most of the victims were sacrificed through decapitation, a tradition widely used by Dahomeyan kings. When a king died, his successor would have to include a significant ceremony in his honour to finish the funeral rites. Until such sacrifices and ceremonies were performed, it was considered that the new king was not approved by the spirits of the ancestors. <laughs> Just to drive the point home that audiences don't go to see low technology period movies, out of the top 100 highest grossing period movies of all time, zero are about primitive people. That is, primordial, Neolithic, Stone Age, or Iron Age people. The next big red flag, and this was obvious to everyone who considered the project, is that The Woman King is not based on anything. Almost every high-budget movie that Hollywood greenlights today is based on a book, comic book, graphic novel, TV show, or it's a remake or reboot or prequel or sequel or some other form of derivative shite, or based on an old movie. Hollywood studios are like banks now. They decide what films to fund based on risk assessment, and like any bank, they want to see a track record of success before they fund a movie. And if there's no track record, there's no money. Almost no high-budget movies get made today from raw scripts based on original ideas. In 2021, of the top 10 highest grossing movies, only one, Free Guy, was entirely original. But Sony decided that they would quietly ignore the fact that The Woman King was a non-IP movie. Sony, drunk on the same social justice, race-conscious, white guilt BLM Kool-Aid that swept over the country like a tidal wave in the summer of 2020, ignored the fact that The Woman King was set in Africa, that it was the worst possible kind of period movie, and that it was non-IP. These were all major indicators that The Woman King would flop, but Sony greenlit it anyway. They also completely ignored the historical distortionism of the movie. This distortion of history is an insult to the present day African tribes who suffered at the hands of the Dahomey, the British and the French whose proud histories were slandered by this filth, and the people living in America and elsewhere today whose ancestors were enslaved by the Dahomey. The Woman King is an insult to the countless people who were enslaved and murdered by this evil kingdom that was rightfully destroyed by the French. Vive la France. So the question is, did Sony know this piece of shit would flop when they greenlit it? They probably did, given that this movie had a suspiciously low budget. Because as much as Sony wanted to fund a black power slay queen race baiting historical fantasy pile of smoldering trash, and in doing so demonstrate to the world their dedication to anti-racist racism, they didn't want it to cost money. So they gave for what is a war movie a shockingly low budget of $50 million. To put that into context, 1917, which does not contain any major set-piece battles, cost $100 million. Top Gun Maverick cost $170 million. The Last Duel cost $100 million. And The Northman cost $90 million. And Sony seriously intended to make a theater release war movie for $50 million? I sense something. Could it be that Sony knew this movie had no chance of success and that the only conceivable way they could make money off this drunken one night stand of a bad idea was to set the budget at the absolute bar minimum and pray to the spirits of the genocidal Dahomey Kings that enough controversy could be generated with their race baiting marketing campaign to make their budget back? Could it be that this project was irresponsibly greenlit in the mad frenzy of virtue signaling that followed George Floyd's death? 
But then when the company execs sobered up and realized what the fuck they'd just done, they were too afraid to cancel it for fear of being called racist. Could it be that in the Soviet-like atmosphere of 2020, every Sony exec who saw the script knew they were holding a flop in their hands, but like the spineless, corrupt apparatchiks that they are, just passed it on up the ladder, hoping that the next guy would kill the project because he didn't want to become known as the racist exec who killed the woman king? Yes. The answer to all of those questions is yes. Normally, the Woman King script would not have made it past the guy that sits up till 1am reading bad script after bad script, but in the ultra race conscious nightmare scape of summer 2020, the script suddenly acquired diversity armor strong enough to survive an attack from a Super Saiyan. <laughs> And so, by a freak accident of history, a script that never would have seen the light of day ended up on the silver screen. Now we move on to the final ingredient in this wretched witch's broth of flop slime. The lead. Sony had initially planned for us and Black Panther star Lupita Nyong'o to star in the movie alongside Viola Davis, and it's a near certainty that if she had, Nyong'o would have been the public face of the movie. But to her eternal credit, she walked away from the project because, apparently, she did some research on the Dahomey and wanted absolutely nothing to do with the movie after finding out about the whole um, genocide thing. But Viola Davis would take the helm. Now, Viola Davis is a very good actress. But if you're producing a four-theater release war movie, you probably don't want a 57-year-old woman who has never been regarded as a leading star to be the lead star and the main personality responsible for selling the movie when it comes to marketing. Let's have another look at those movies we mentioned earlier. The Last King of Scotland starred Forrest Whitaker and James McAvoy. The lead in Black Hawk Down was Josh Hartnett, an actor whose name I had forgotten and had to look up when writing this script, and who is now entirely unknown to anyone under the age of 30. But in the early 2000s, he was a big name and a leading man. Blood Diamond starred Leonardo DiCaprio, that piece of shit Mandela movie whose full name I couldn't be bothered writing down again, starred Idris Elba. I saw that movie, by the way. It sucks. Don't watch it. Watch Cry Freedom instead. Hotel Rwanda starred Don Cheadle and Rogue starred Megan Fox. Those A-list Hollywood stars could not sell their movies in Africa, but if we are to believe Sony, Sony thought that a 57-year-old actress known for her supporting roles would succeed where the A-listers had failed. Well, call me cynical, but... The Woman King was the perfect flop. There is not a single element of this movie that suggested it would ever have succeeded. Sony knew this, and they made it anyway, hoping that if they could stoke a cultural race war, it might get them over the profit line as long as the budget was low enough. This was an utterly cynical, dastardly design, and I am truly glad that it failed miserably. The Woman King has been a hard flop. Sony have lost a lot of money on the movie, and it was a well-deserved loss. Sony have also disgraced themselves very publicly. The Woman King is not, as the trailer asserts, based on powerful true events. But it is a powerful lesson in what happens when business and art is directed by politics. Very bad decisions get made. Individuals become too afraid to go against prevailing groupthink, and the resulting failures generate more failures. Greenlighting the Woman King was a bad decision. Everyone at Sony powerful enough to stop the movie in pre-production was too afraid to act, and the inevitable result was an unsellable movie that spawned one of the worst, most disgusting marketing campaigns in Hollywood history, a public relations nightmare, damaged careers, and massive financial loss. I hope that Hollywood learn the lessons of the Woman King's failure and get activists out of entertainment. But what do you think? Is this a realistic prospect? Can Hollywood de in time to save themselves? Please share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for listening, subscribe, and don't forget the role the like button played in the final defeat of the Confederacy and the abolition of slavery.